Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about why do we ignore red flags in the people we like? Okay, so this is a really interesting one because it seems like when we do start dating someone or we start having a crush on someone, we start liking someone, um, sometimes we can ignore the red flags that they say that they do because we really like them. So. One of the th reasons why we do this is because we can see their potential. Like, oh, if they didn't act this way or if they didn't do this, then they would be such a good partner for me. And you think maybe you can change them. And you, you're looking at their potential, but you're not actually looking at the reality of what you've really got on your hands, right? So that's one of the reasons. We look at their potential. We see what they could be and we ignore what they are, okay? Another reason is, is that we get hypnotized by their attractiveness. So if you go out on a date with someone or you uh, start really crushing on someone, sometimes we get so enamored by the way that they look that again, we ignore the red flags because we're so attractive, to, we're so attracted to them and we want to sleep with them. We want to be around them because they have this sort of like aura about them. And they've got that, just that little something that just ticks all the boxes for us in the attractiveness department. Okay, so that's another reason why um, we ignore the red flags because we're just so attracted and we're just kind of ignoring everything else because everything else, you know, because their their beauty or their, their handsomeness is just, you know, so enticing that, you know, we want to ignore the red flags. We want to ignore those things because we want to be with this person. This is a really attractive person. We want to be close to them, sleep with them, all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's another reason why we ignore the red flags, because we get hypnotized by their attractiveness. Another reason um, is kind of laziness. You know, we want our search to end. You know, we're quite happy to be like, okay, please, this one ticks most of the boxes. There's some things that they've said, some things that they've done I'm not really like, but they're really attractive. And I've been, you know, searching for someone for so long. I've been single for so long. I think I'll just take this one, right? <laughs> and then we settle. Right, we settle for someone who isn't what we truly actually want and is displaying a lot of red flags because we're just too lazy to continue to date. Because dating, you know, it is um, sometimes, you know, you can have a dry spell. Sometimes you might not have a date for like a couple of months. Um, and then sometimes you may have an influx of dates and then you're out nearly all the time and you don't have enough time for yourself because you're just dating. Um, and sometimes, you know, that can... It's, it can be a really long process, especially if, let's say, you've been on a few dates that didn't quite go that well, they weren't very successful, and you're just hoping that the next one's going to be it. And they tick a lot of the boxes, but not all of the boxes. They've got some red flags that you're ignoring because, you know, perhaps, you know, you, you just want your your journey to end. You just want to find someone. And I can see the, the pull to believe that and to think that. Um, but it's one of those things, you know, if you do that sort of thing, you've got to live with the consequences potentially for the rest of your life if you do end up staying with that person for the long haul. You know, you've got to remember, right, that, you know, some people, they spend more time considering a house or considering a car or considering a job than the person they're going to spend 70 years with or 50 years with. Right, the person you pick is extremely important because they're going to be there forever. They're going to be there for the rest of your life and perhaps they may even outlive you, right? You know, so you got to pick that person wisely. And if you ignore the red flags, then, you know, you're going to end up with someone that you don't want and it may lead down to a messy divorce or you will have a miserable long life with them and you don't want that. So don't ignore the red flags. But I can see why if you've been dating for a while, you can get tired, you can get exhausted from it. You've, you've been on, you know, too many first dates that didn't lead anywhere. And, you know, you finally get one where it's saw it is leading somewhere, but you're ignoring the red flags. So, you know, you can see why this th sort of thing can happen. And you, I can understand why that kind of thing can happen because dating is a long process. I was single for three years before I met my wife and in and out I was dating, you know, sometimes I would go on you know, uh, two dates a month or some day, some months I wouldn't date anyone at all. Maybe there would even be, you know, like a good string of months where I wouldn't date anyone for a long time. And then there'll be a time when I'll be date going on a date every week and maybe a date during the week. 
And, you know, it was a long process, but I learned a lot in those three years, I can say that, right? Um, but it can be a long process, and sometimes if you meet someone that's kind of just, you know, yeah, they'll, they'll do, right? And, um, but unfortunately, if they have a lot of red flags, it's going to make you very, very unhappy, okay? Especially if they're deal breakers for you, okay? Um, so another reason why we ignore the red flags in people we like is we falsely believe we can change we can change them because we think we're special. So for example, this is something that happened to me was, um, and it's the, a, a, a example I use all the time, but I think it's a really good example, is you know when I was in my first ever relationship, um, the girl that I was with said to me, oh, what would you do if I cheated on you? She asked me that question. Now that did result in her actually cheating on me a few months later only a few months later, it wasn't even that long into the relationship that she did that, and, um, you know, I falsely believed when she asked that to me, and she said to me things like, oh, I've cheated on everyone I've ever been with in the past, I thought that I was special, I thought that I would be the one that would make her not do that, you know, because I would, you know, I'm going to show the world, I'm going to show the stars, I'm going to make it everything amazing, and she's going to love me so much that she's not going to want to cheat, but she did, right, because we, you know, sometimes we falsely believe that we are special, that we are going to be the ones that can change this person, when in reality, that is extremely unlikely, so we falsely believe that we're special, and we can change those people, and stop them, you know, portraying these red flags, we can fix them, essentially, but, you shouldn't have to fix anybody. What I think is the perfect relationship is when there's two, when there is two complete people coming together, okay, They're two complete people, not people that are like, oh yeah, this one, this one cheats a lot, right, and they come together, no, because that's, you know, you're gonna have to make up for it, basically, you're gonna have to make up for the things that they're lacking, and all sorts of things, and you can't fix them, if something's not there, it's not there, okay, if, there's, if they've got a screw loose in some sort of area, not necessarily a screw loose mentally, but a screw loose like they cheat too much, or they've got some other thing that you're not happy with, let's say that they're a couch potato, whereas you're someone who's really active, again, you can't change the other person, you shouldn't change them, right, you should, you should be looking for someone who already is what you're looking for, who's already whole and complete, and is the complete package for you in your perception, in your eyes, okay, so, um, one of the things that you need to learn to do then is you need to learn to date objectively and to be skeptical. So you should have a clear idea of what it is that you're looking for, of what your deal breakers are. You know, for example, perhaps you don't want to be with someone who is who has been unfaithful, right? Perhaps you want to be with someone who is active and healthy. Perhaps you want to be with someone who doesn't like to party and go clubbing all the time. You know, um, perhaps you want to find someone who wants to have children and get married. You know, you've got to figure out what your green flags are and what your red flags are and um, go from there, basically, because it's different from everyone. A red flag for me might not be the same for you, okay? So, you know, you've got to figure out what your deal breakers are, what you could live with, what you couldn't live with, and what you can't live without, okay? And figure out what those things are. So when you go out on a date, you're looking for these things. You're looking for the green flags. You're looking for the red flags. And you're not ignoring the red flags, okay? So um, you've got to understand what your deal breakers are and make it into like a code of conduct, of conduct, right? So for example, like a, an example of this might be, I will not date someone who says they have cheated in the past. That could be, a, you know, a code of conduct for you. You know, something that you... Um, affirm to yourself, right? So sometimes that might be a fun thing for you, like writing out a list basically of the things that you're looking for and the things that you you don't want in a relationship and then making that into a code of conduct, okay? So um, that's why we ignore the red flags in the people that we like. I hope it's beneficial to you. I hope it's helped you. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me, then please go to www christineloveridge.com. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.